starting to the main point, let us discuss something on the introductory part. Main haze emerges through the process of biological and cultural evolution in a long span of time. Chronology, the study of events in time frame, is a central theme of archaeologists, like the geologists who deal with the story of art history. In fact, chronology is one of the most fundamental issues and perhaps a characteristic of archaeology. Archaeologists use several methods to assign ages the events of the past. They are engaged in defining the stages of hominid evolution and their artifactual record and the assignment of a chronology to these stages. Let's come to the point definition of chronology. Chronology is a science of measuring time and ordering of things in time. According to the Dictionary of Anthropology, the word chronology means the science of computing dates or treaties showing arrangement of events with dates. In other words, chronology is the arrangement of events or the materials which represent them in the order of their occurrence in time. Any study of the origins of human must be said in a chronological context. methods for building chronology. There are some specific methods which are used in each site in determining the chronology. In applying the dating methods in a particular site, it is important to consider a number of factors such as number one, the nature and availability of the sample. Number two, the purposes. Number three, limitations. And number four, the kind of problem encountered by the site. Now let's come to the type of chronology. There are mainly two types of dating methods. The first one is relative dating and the second one is absolute dating. Relative dating fixes a time frame in relation to the other strata or material and not in absolute dates in number. It is difficult to know the total time.
time span involved in the intervals between the things. On the other hand, the absolute dating technique exhibits chronology in terms of year. It offers precise and accurate dating. Some of the common and widely applied absolute dating methods are radiocarbon dating or C14 method, potassium argon dating or KA40, thermoluminescence or TL glow, and dendrochronology or tree ring analysis. In the early stages of prehistoric studies, deer have only relative chronology. But in the last 50 years, with the emergence of C14 method, there has been total change in dating scenario. Under relative dating, there are different methods such as stratigraphy, typology, florin analysis, palynology, paleontology, and patination. Now let us come to the next point, stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is the study of strata or layers formed either naturally or due to human occupation in a particular area. The former is called geological stratigraphy and the latter is archaeological stratigraphy. Both are important to derive relative date of a particular site. The use of stratigraphy is the most important method for establishing relative dating. The method depends on the basic geological principle date. The earlier deposits lie under the later deposits. The kind of chronology one can derive through stratigraphy in for a culture in terms of older or younger than another one, but it cannot ascertain the exact date for any of these cultures. However, the basic stratigraphic association of artifact types within and between archaeological sites are still very important in building chronology. The next point is typology. Through typology, artifacts are classified according to their form or shape and their relative antiquity. Based on the presumption date, crude and poorly preserved tools are earlier than refined and well preserved tools. For example, Neolithic tools were more developed than the Paleolithic tools. But this method is not a reliable one, as it cannot give a fruitful result universally. On the other hand, typological classification, when applied locally and in corroboration with stratigraphic methods, serve as a very useful tool for understanding the different forms and traditions in the manufacture of different classes of artifacts. also helps in establishing comparison and links between distantly placed cultural remains. Now let's turn to the next point, chlorine analysis. Chlorine analysis discloses the percentage of fluoroapatite in bone specimens found in archaeological sites. This analysis is based on the principle that the longer a bone is placed in soil, the more will fluorine be caught in, and hence one can suggest a relative thing. All bonds, whether of animal or of human beings, 
lying in the same level exhibit similar fluorine percentage in the Therefore, if the quantity of fluoroapatite remains same in both kinds of bone, it is sure that they belong to the same age. The bones acquire from the lower level show more fluorine in them, whereas the bones coming from the upper level contains less fluorine. Fluorine test is generally applied to the mixed disposal of human and animal bones. The method cannot provide an absolute chronological age because the amount of fluorine differs from soil to soil, which gives a differential rate of absorption. A similar type of technique is the analysis of phosphorus concentration, which works nicely in relation to lack soil deposit. Now turn to next point, patination. Patination generally means chemical alterations, usually brought about by the action of iron oxides through time. The amount of patina on the stone artifact is an index of its age and is valuable for relative placement of the stone artifact in technological development. The different types of tools from the river gravel, terraces of rivers or lakes can be differentiated in the relative amounts of patina on the basis of which the relative age can be assigned on the artifact. A. J. S. Godwin, who worked extensively on patination in 1960, lists many variables involved in patina formation as well as different types of patination. Now turn to the next point, palynology. Pollen grains which are produced in large quantities by plants are almost indestructible and can be identified by their shape when seen through microscope. In a wet site like peat bog or a buried surface, pollen grains are well fragile. Palynologists are able to extract pollen from various strata of a deposit and to examine them under a microscope and identify the genus and even the species to which they belong from their shape, structure and other factors. From this, they can determine the kind of vegetation and the climate which corresponds with each stratum. Pollen analysis can be useful not only for relative dating but also for giving absolute dating. The next point is paleontology method. Paleontology method is applicable for the areas where change in climate cause migration or extinction as well as brings different animals and plants into a region of which certain species of animals have become extinct since man appeared. Taking these two factors into account, one may use paleontology to establish relative dates. Thus, one can assume a temperate climate if such species as Elephas antiquus, forest elephant, are present, whereas elephant primigenus, a steppe elephant, indicate a steppe or tundra environment of almost glacial conditions. Absolute dating method, let us discuss on radioactive dating or carbon-14. Radiocarbon dating is a chemical analysis used to determine the age of organic materials based on their content of the radioisotope of carbon-C14. 
The method was developed in the 1940s by Willard F. Levy and a team of scientists at the University of Chicago. In 1960, Willard F. Levy received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his method to use carbon-14 for its determination in archaeology, geology, geophysics, and other branches of science. Radiocarbon dating is based on the fact that neutrons produced by cosmic radiations enter the Earth's atmosphere and react with the nitrogen isotope N14. The reaction produces a heavy isotope of carbon C14, which is radioactive and has a half-life of 5,730 years. Chemically, C14 seems to behave exactly as ordinary non-radioactive carbon C12 does. Thus, the C14 atoms readily mix with the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere together with C12 and eventually enter into all living things as part of the normal oxygen exchange process that involves all living things say plants and animals including men. As long as an organic matter is living and hence in exchange with the atmosphere, it continues to receive C12 and C14 atoms in a constant proportion. After that, the organism is no longer in exchange with the atmosphere and no longer absorbs atoms of contemporary carbon. After the date of an organism, the C14 contained in the physical structure begins to disintegrate at a known rate based on the half-life value of C14. By measuring the level of radioactivity remaining in the organic substance, one can establish the time when the plant or animal died. By radiocarbon method, one can date many different types of organic or inorganic materials as long as they consist of carbon. The datable organic materials are charcoal, pollen, woods, twigs, seeds, bones, antler, cells, fish remains, and insect remains. The non-organic materials are sediments and soils, ice core, metal casting ore, underground water, pigment from wall paintings. Radiocarbon or C14 dating is the most widely accepted technique for studying the chronological relationship of archaeological complexes. Now turn to potassium argon dating method. Potassium argon dating method is similar to the carbon dating. The Earth's crust contains potassium of which isotope K40 decays to argon A40 at a known rate. The ratio of potassium to argon may be measured to ascertain the date of minerals and rocks in a deposit. This method is able to cover a wide range of time even far greater than C14 method because the half-life of the radioactive potassium is 1330 million years. The method has proved quite useful in dating some hominid fossils as employed in the site of Old Vigors in East Africa where the remains were as old as 1.75 million years. Now turn to another dating method known as thermoluminescence or TL dating. Thermoluminescence dating was developed in 1960s mainly at the Oxford Research Laboratory 
for archaeology and the history of art by M. A. King and co-workers. Initially designed to date archaeological ceramics, it was subsequently extended to other mineral materials, such as burnt flint. The method was based on the fact that objects such as pottery that have been heated in the past could be dated by measurement of thermoluminescence or TL glow. The phenomenon results from radioactive influence of the metallic elements like uranium and potassium present in the clay and surrounding soil. Now turn to another dating method known as dendrochronology. Dendrochronology is a very important absolute dating method and was first developed by Dr. A. E. Douglas of Arizona University. The age of wooden objects can be determined by means of dendrochronology or tree ring analysis. The method is based on the fact that every year trees form an annual growth ring which can be counted. Dendrochronology has therefore become well established in the field of archaeology, art history, and cultural heritage. The major drawback of this method is that it has limited application as it helps in dating of wooden objects which are only few thousand years old. In addition to all these dating techniques, there are several other methods such as optical and infrared stimulated luminations OSA dating and electron spin resonance ESR dating of tooth enamel of larger mammals, which are also of equal importance. In recent years, the application of absolute dating methods such as thorium, uranium, and uranium series have become increasingly useful in conducting a chronological framework for many parts of the world.